half a fucking million. I'm speechless. I'm gobsmacked. I'm flabbergasted. I never thought this would ever happen when I started my YouTube channel, and it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you. So, this calls for a very special video. Story time with Daddy Caddy. Hello boys and girls, and welcome to Story Time with Daddy Caddy. I hope you're all sitting comfortably because I'm about to begin. Now, hush now, shh. Be quiet now. Sure. Shut up! Okay, now, this is the classic... St SIT DOWN! This is the classic story of Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day. That was against the rules. So the teacher got a hatchet and gutted it from the inside and all the kids had lamb burgers for lunch. Greetings and salutations my beautiful people and welcome to the Caddy Crush Show where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. And what a task I've set myself up for today. In fact, it's such a big task, I'm not even going to bother trying to slaughter or salvage it. Yes, indeed. And this particular video idea I've had planned all the way since 100,000 subscribers, just in case, for whatever reason, by some miracle, I hit half a million subscribers. So this has been in plan for a long time, and I'm so happy I finally get to do it. And we will get to do it. But before we do, I have a question for everybody. Who remembers Netya Rose on PS1? Oh, I've been waiting to talk properly about this thing for ages. Net Your Ose was released in 1997 around Europe and Australia, North America and Japan, and it was a sexy matte black PS1 retailing at around $750. For inflation's sake, today that's the equivalent to $1,122.60, holy shit. And luckily you don't just get a black PS1, you also received a lot of manuals and get this, software development kits. For you see, if you had an IBM PC or Macintosh as well as $750, just lying around being used as a doormat, you could program your very own PS1 games and send them straight to the Net Eurose PS1, where you can test the game, enter debug menus, and all without any region locking at all. It was a PS1 console that could do practically anything as well as play any game from any region, and I'd love to have one, but You can fuck right off, I'm not paying that much for it. Look at how powerful my PC has to be to run it all on another 10 megabyte hard drive, fuck off! And the great thing about Net Eurose, which Eurose in Japanese literally means let's do it together. <laughs> is that people could obviously make their own games, but in the official UK PlayStation magazine, they'd also be able to put up the full completed games into their demo discs, ready for millions of people in the UK to play whatever these random people had made in their bedrooms from all over the world. This shit must have been way ahead of its time in the late 90s. And it does sound pretty funny being able to play games made by random members of the public, but in all seriousness, some very prominent figures in gaming nowadays got their start in Net Eurose development, with some games even getting released on Xbox Live Arcade, and even Mitsuru Kamiyama, who developed two games under Net Eurose himself is now the director of the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicle series at Square Enix. So hey, this is already pretty promising, so how about for 500,000 subscribers, we do a marathon of Net Eurose games. Oh yes, one after the other, on multiple demo discs and some even from other countries around the world. Today everybody, let's just do it and play through 66 different games. Yes, 66. That's more than Action 52. As we decide if the Neto Rose was even a good idea at all in the first place, or if indeed the people that made all of these games wasted all of their money in the late 90s and shouldn't have ever been game designers in the first place. We are so fucking horrible. Happy 500,000 subscribers, everybody. Let's do this. Okay, so game number one, Terra Incognita. Fuck, nice title screen, devs. And wow, this was done by a handful of people on a PS1 in the late 90s with no budget at all. I'm impressed. And yes, multiple languages is lovely, but as you'll soon see, you might as well play in Japanese. No kidding! What do you say at this point? I know, Aroma, that there is golden pedestal in the ancient ruins in this island. I know, but 
They say the treasure is protected by horrible monster. We cannot prove such thing without doing anything. We have managed several times till now. Everything go well this time to- Take care and go by yourself. You are still a coward guy. But I am really, really scary. Well, yep, I can agree with that. Wow, there's even opening credits? And listen to this music. You know what, I'm honestly stunned this wasn't made by a third-party publisher exclusively for Sony or anything. This looks and sounds great. It plays alright too. It's a puzzle game that plays like, believe it or not, Captain Toad. You're given a load of floaty, squarish stages, you can twist the stage at every angle you can, solve puzzles, and here you can even fight. Yeah, it's shit and you get locked into place after every time you get attacked so you can't counter back, but it's something. But then on level 3, I fucked up and that's it. Game over. I can't move this metal crate any further down to this switch, meaning I can't use this box to get the key up here, meaning that fuck it next game. Game 2 is Blitterboy by Video Clay Productions. Well, that's not exactly as impressive as Team Fatal, is it? Get your shit together. Don't you wink at me, you little fucker. Well, holy shit, this is surprising. This game rocks. You save babies who all seem to think you're their dad. <laughs> Meaning that Blitter Boy must be a horny old toad. You're winking at me to put more babies inside me, boy. And you shoot ghosts to ominous music and use power-ups. It controls great, the power-ups are fun, the graphics are really pretty, and yeah, it's hard as balls, but definitely the best game so far. Game three is... Winning the award for best music ever. I can jam to this, where's my bass? So the game is basically 3D Pac-Man. It works well enough, but that fucking epic jazzy bass tune never stops no matter what, I love it. And every time you get a power up, you hear this. Every time you start a stage, you hear this. And every time you die, my God, you hear this. What the actual shit, this is my favorite game ever made. But yeah, the game's okay, not much more to say. Let's move on. Game four, a dog tail, cool. Okay, I thought that was in the background, fuck off. And I really don't mean to be too critical about a game made in this way, but holy shit, these controls are some of the worst in a platform I've ever played. You're heavier than a safe, you barely jump, everything is too fast, I can't grab this key here, and looking at this guy's face tells me that I won't miss anything if I skip it. Number five, rocks and gems. Well, this doesn't seem too bad, I mean... <laughs> So yeah, you die very quickly in this game and it's fucking impossible. You have to collect these gems here, but the rules on how and why the rocks drop down change every few seconds. I don't get why sometimes they fall and sometimes they don't. Either way, I guess if you learn the rules properly, it'll be an alright high octane puzzle game, but for me it's just a load of <laughs> Game 6, Total Soccer. Honestly, I'm really impressed here. I mean, I couldn't give a salty pig anus about football at all, but I can at least appreciate the level of depth on display here. It's very impressive. And the game works well too. Never before has a match between Louvarpool and Minchester United been so intense. You can even instant replay any last few seconds of the game with the press of the circle button. It's so awesome. Come on, Louvarpool, let's win this game. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be playing these games, should I? Game seven is Mahjong. I can't really say much about it. It works really well and it's Mahjong. <laughs> Shut up. Game eight, Haunted Maze. <laughs> Okay, once you get over the horrifying intro, this game is pretty fun. You have to quickly find every item in the maze and avoid ganking monsters or else... Yeah, that happens. The music is a mix of awesome Baroque and classical pieces. The graphics aren't the worst I've ever seen for a game made in this way. The gameplay is simple but fast and challenging, and those noises the monsters make used to scare the shit out of me as a kid. To be honest though, the music in level 4 complements your goofy walk cycle just a little bit too well. Game 9, Bouncer 2. A pretty novel concept, actually. It's breakout, yet you have two people bouncing on these weighing scales, picking up momentum as they knock down everything. And hitting the floor isn't a life loss as you just lose momentum. It's pretty cool shit. And the fact you can swap the guys around on the fly adds to the charm. I like it. Moving on. Game 10, Stonegate. Ah, okay, it's a fighting game. I guess it's two players only, though, as the opponent never moves. <coughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm done here. Ah! Number 11, Gas Girl. Uh, what is all this about? Ugh, what's going on? Ugh. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. You're now in a 2D platform with 3D sprites as you collect floating bottoms and fart on enemies. I'm not even joking. Whoever made this was fucking sick. And it turns out that the controls are stiff and you have to constantly face away from the enemy so your gaseous tunnel can attack in the first place. So overall, it isn't very fun and why are you watching me through my bedroom window? Game 12, hover racing. Well, I mean, it's no F-Zero or Wipeout, but fuck, it's it's functional. And actually pretty damn fun. You get lots of cars to pick through, decent track designs, kick-ass music, decent controls if a little heavy. It's solid stuff here. Bravo, Satu Tomokazu. Game 13. Okay, I have to reach the flag as this ladybug while avoiding scorpions. This is- this is odd. A and now- now I'm stuck. Where do I go? I can't move fast enough to go around them, so... What? Oh. Um... Well, now I really am stuck. I'm pressing all the buttons, it's not doing anything. This is it now. A load of wank. I do love how the water effect is just platforms rising and falling at different times though. That's pretty ingenious, I must admit. Game 14, Nanatan. Holy hell, this is cool. I guess it's an infinite running tank game where you avoid rockets and fire at as many things as possible for your score, which would be fine, but this one turret here follows your movements, and by the time you fire at the thing, it's impossible to get away from its counterfire since you can't strafe or move away fast, meaning... Yeah, moving on. Game 15, Cat Game. Oh god almighty. This is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen, and the gameplay is even worse. Move left and right, get fish in basket, don't let other fish hit the floor or lose a life, all while listening to some of the worst music ever that for some reason fucks up its timing around every loop. Oh god, where are we now? Only at number 16. <laughs> this is Tan Tank, a difficult but enjoyable tank destruction game. Every tank has different attacks, different health bars, and you even have a manual gear system to work around. I wanted to keep going with this one because it was quite fun, but I couldn't pass stage one. It was really fucking difficult, but eh, let's give this one a pass. Number 17, Columns. I must admit this one was really fun and addicting. You have to match up three or more of the same colored symbols as they quickly drop from the top, kind of like Tetris, but with a twist. And instead of just rotating the shapes around, you can freely flip on what order the colors on each block go around on your next drop, and you can match diagonally as well as vertically and horizontally. Pretty damn cool and funky music, let it pass. Number 18, a bob. A bob. So, um, I, I guess I'll pick Sweden because they look the cutest and also- Oh, a bob. I get it now. Bob sled, I, I see. Okay, off we go. Ah! Oh, fuck. Oh, good God. Fucking Jesus. Oh, my. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh fuck. Jesus. We're off. And now there's a ramp. Wait, what? Help me. Help. What are you doing, guys? What are you doing? Okay, so you go down the slope as fast as you can and then rack up as many points as possible with a random ending rhythm mini game. Kind of enjoyable. It would have been better if this bit didn't control like I wanted to kill myself, though. Number 19 is called Cart. Cart. And... What? I mean, I guess it's two-player, but... Uh, wait, what? What does that mean? What does this do? What's that? Where's any sound? How? Okay, game 20. Bomb. No music again, lovely. Um, again, I guess two-player only, but this makes even less sense than Cart does. Don't look at me like that, you cheeky shit. Come on, Bomb, keep on running. They never believed in you. Your mother always told you to give up. Your father always laughed at you behind your back, but you keep on running, man. To glory, to victory, to a better place. Actually, no, they were right, you're useless. Ooh, game 21, RC racing. No sound again. <laughs> Jesus, I'm going mad. In fact, I'm going more mad than the morons who made this game. It controls like shit, it looks like shit, it isn't fun at all, and what kind of RC racing is this? What does RC even stand for in this case? Rectal cavity? Are we playing as flying rectal cavities? I don't know what else they could be, it looks terrible. Game 22, a third of the way there. We're getting somewhere. Pushy 2B. Okay. Ah, it's one of those games where you push blocks around and solve puzzles. The puzzles are pretty well designed, honestly, and the sound effects never fail in making me piss myself from laughter. If anything, I guess they didn't need to make some of these sounds so loud. I mean... Ah! Number 23, Psycon. Move and shoot. I like, I like. Let's kill some bastards. Warning, strong flashing lights approaching. Leave the video now if you don't want your eyes to hate you forever. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> I think the game broke. I can't even move. Um, oh, oh yes, yes I can, yes I can. 
Oh, look at this mess. Can we just use this image here as the official box art for this game since it's clearly polished enough for a fully retail price physical release on the shelves? Number 24, Adventure Game. I haven't played this one for years. Oh yeah, I remember this one. It was on a demo along with Rugrat's Search for Reptar, I believe. Tommy will kill you in your sleep. And this game is most certainly an adventure. Well, as far as they go, anyway. Explore, fight enemies, talk to people for objectives. It's not half bad. And what's great is the sense of humor this game has. It's self-aware and parody in all the right ways, and some lines here genuinely made me laugh. Always nice to see parody done right, and this was from a guy making this from scratch without any budget. Number 25, Super Bub Contest. This game is actually fucking awesome. It should be a full game. It's like Tetris meets Mean Bean Machine, I guess. You match up colors in any line that you can make, and then use these powered colors to suck them all up and the more you suck up and the higher combos you garner the more gets thrown onto the opposite side and it can get tense this is pure awesome also i'm called chump and my face is this 10 out of 10. Number 26, Pandora's Box. You push boxes around into holes in 3D first person so you can't see how to solve the puzzles at all so it's pretty terrible and the game makes these noises a lot. <laughs> Number 27, Opera of Destruction. Well, sometimes destruction, most of the time. <laughs> Hello! Enemies are supposed to attack this city here, but they, they never really do. Next, number 28, Time Slip. Again, an awesome game, if fucking difficult. This is the one that actually ended up remastered on Xbox Live Arcade, and good for it because it's an awesome idea executed really well. Time Slip is a platformer with a snail, Aww. and as you collect coins, jump around and find the exit every so often, a copy of yourself appears doing exactly the same things that you just did right up until the clock went off last. And every time the clock goes off, another copy enters the game doing the same things you just did. This means you use past versions of yourself to solve puzzles, but if you collide with yourself at any point, it's game over. In all seriousness, great game. Number 29, Tanks, with an X, so it must be badass. And it's two player only, I can't even move. Next! Number 30, Decaying Orbit. Not that awful, actually. It's just very heavy with the controls, and it even has a lengthy story. All you do here is try reaching the next marked planet by boosting your engines in the right direction, but if you head for the planet too quickly, you'll bounce right off because of fucking science. And if you can control your trajectory and land slowly enough, you win the stage, and you even get to fight other enemies and such. It's not bad overall, and you can even use your own custom CDs for music. Yeah, pretty cool. Number 31, Blocks. <laughs> And I call it that because this game is boring. It's like Tetris, but you have free range of where you put any fucking blocks, and there's an odd power-up that you have to activate. Other than that, there's no sound, no music, it's really fucking bland, it doesn't actually control that well, and doesn't make you think, it's just wank. Number 32, Video Poker Simulator. Well, I mean, it works. I don't exactly understand who you're betting against or how you lose or win money. I mean, how do you know you've won with your hand if you can't see the other hand you've supposedly won against? I don't get it. And when you bet five coins and win a hand, you just get the five coins back so you don't actually win anything. I, I, what, what? Oh, Jesus, we're only on 33. 33, we're on game 33 and that's only halfway. Let's just hope this picks up a little bit. Come on, indie devs, impress me. <laughs> Well, I spoke too soon. Eurose Rally is a game with cars, racing, train track controls, no physics, and funny noises that make the car engine sound like creepy man sneaking in to look in a window music. Other than that, it looks okay, but it certainly isn't passable as a racing game. Onwards and upwards. Number 34, Net Eurose Intro. Hmm. Wait, that's Star Wars. That, that's Star Wars. How did this work out legally exactly? Um, I know I'm not a game, only four days of work. Wow, that took you four days? Oh, times have changed. This is adorable. Get out of here, you cutie. Number 35, Bendy Demo. Oh, well, consider me sick. This is what it sounds like, a demo with bending. No noises, no gameplay, just trippy, dippy bending. God, I'm gonna hurl. Number 36, 3D Breakout. Well, I can see the 3D, I, I can't see the breakout, though. I keep getting points for some reason, but I'm pressing every button and nothing is happening. This isn't even me controlling the camera, the game is doing that. Oh, game over? Oh, fuck off. Number 37, Car Race. Amazing. Loving the original title there. And if you ever wanted to play a bouncier and silent version of Micro Machines, this is the game for you. I mean, it plays okay, it just isn't any fun, and it's silent. 
This is the most awkward date I've ever been on. Number 38, clone. My god, this was the cause of many a nightmare when I was a kid. Fuck this game. I mean, it's actually pretty good. It's a first person Doom clone with a map, keys, and doors, and shooting. But the lack of music, fleshy, gross floors, foreboding heartbeat, and these things chasing you makes it one of the scariest games I ever played when I was a kid. Screw whoever came up with whatever these things are, and if I ever hear that scream again, I'll literally shit my pants. <laughs> Well, I did warn them. That's just wonderful. Number 39, 3D Demo. Another demo with no gameplay or sounds, hooray. But you know, for a test of 3D, this animation and texturing is impressive for the PS1 and made by like one guy in his or her bedroom. Not much else to say, except man, the potential for something was here, but I'm not really sure what. Number 40, Feedback Demo. Oh, well, yes, I'm feeding back, all right. Feeding back from what I ate earlier and spewing it all over the floor. What even is this shit? Again, no gameplay and silence. What? Numbers? Is this how many people the screen has killed? Because that wouldn't surprise me. Number 41, flag demo. Okay, should we just call this thing demo euros, eh? Because there seems to be tons of dumping material here and I'm very confused. However, I must say that not only is this impressive flag technology for the time, but you could customize exactly how the flag blows in the wind. And with some figure combinations, it can almost be hypnotizing. Oh. Oh, baby, wiggle that chair for me. Number 42, Manic X. It's Pac-Man. What more can I say? Pac-Man! Number 43, Sneeve. What an awful name for a game. So here is a passable space shooter in a trippy-ass tunnel. It's not bad, although I have to question why on Earth you have to pick up lots of the same... Little girl! But yeah, self-explanatory. Not much else to say here. Number 44, Sound to Light. Um, yeah, I think this is a good sequence of numbers and letters. No. Nothing's happening. My guess is that I have to play a CD and then it makes a light effects show based on the CD I picked And if so, that'd be awesome, but I really can't do that here over copyright. So uh, Black screen simulator 1997 number 45 tunnel demo another demo Yay, and this one just makes me ill look at this nonsense And every time you hit a wall you cut to another random angle of the track This is nothing but a donut shaped track and yet I was still getting lost and by the way square and circle moves you left and right Number 46, Poon Yerose. What? 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 I seriously don't know what any of this is about. All I know is that the longer the line gets, the faster the music gets, and that's it? I thought this was Snake or something, but no. Speeding up. What are you even saying? Fuck this shit. Get out of Number 47, Car Demo. My god, another one in silence. Well, hey, at least I can make my own little story here. One day, Lightning McQueen met Sally in the middle of the road, and he was feeling very naughty, and so decided to raid her boot and leave his oil in there at the end. Number 48, Between the Eyes. Sounds painful. And yes, this is painful. It's a racing game, and I wouldn't argue a bad one, but still, bleh, look at this. Your eyes can dissect this game as good as I can bother talking about it, so before I'm sick anymore, let's move right on out of here. Number 49, Second Offense Demo. What is this? What is that? What is this? <laughs> what is this? I really don't have a clue what's going on here. All I can say is that this is a good PS1 face. It's like PS2 quality, but that, that's all though. Number 50, Fatal Fantasy 7. Is this, what is this? Is this a ripoff? What is this? That's the guy who now works at Square Enix. What, what's going on here? Is this is this a prototype thing for Final Fantasy VII? What's, what's going on here? If this is like Demo FF7 for 3D models and animations, then this is gaming history right here. But if not, then it's just a waste of time. Number 51, Fujiyama. This here is a slideshow software on how fucking awesome Mount Fuji is and pictures taken from different areas of Japan. This is probably one of the earliest instances of a pure fandom game being distributed to masses on a popular console, and honestly, I find it kind of unsettling. Ugh, what am I looking at here? Why don't you marry the thing you love it so much? Number 52, unknown. Literally, unknown. And there is no sound here again. Looks like another testing software for a top-down shooter, and it looks like it has potential, but again, there's nothing going on. It isn't finished, so what more can I say? Well, how about we move on to number 53, Appointed Station. One of the worst names I've ever heard for a video game, and another shooter in a test phase. But look at this. This shit is actually awesome for independent PS one development. Well done, devs. Yoi did it. But I suppose you also got me. Like, what, three game overs at once? I must be the worst fucking player of all time. Number 54, Sam the Boulder Man. Is there a reason he never reached superstardom alongside Mario? Well, using the same intro music from Clone, the same sound effects from Clone, and the gameplay from Rock 
rocks and gems with random deaths and all says practically everything I need to know. And holy shit, every time you grab a mushroom, there's that deathly scream from clone ready to kill your heart. <laughs> So yes, sorry Sam the Boulder Man, you suck. On to the next one. Number 55, Gravitation. Oh! And honestly, this one is a lot of fun, even if it's better with two players. You steer and use the engines, that's it. And you have to navigate around an obstacle course with numbered gates. The physics are fun, it's satisfying to fly, and it's really damn fun, if a little bit hard. Luckily, you can try beating your own times if you haven't got a friend, but when you do, I remember playing this game with my sister over a decade ago, and it's a blast, especially when you can put your own CD in to listen to music. Number 56, Z2. Yay, I've always wanted to play a game where I'm a fruit blender firing rockets at tanks, then firing rockets at turrets, and the turrets never taking damage and then dying. I've always wanted to play a game like that. Number 57, Combat 3D. And holy shit, this is a remake, people. A remake of Combat on the Atari 2600, but in 3D. And it works just as well. It's a shame there are no sounds. Even a 1977 Atari game could do that really well. But eh, it's a project done by maybe one person on a custom PS1. I think I'll let it slide. Number 58, Revolution. And this is another fun game, thank God. It's a flying simulator with an obstacle course that controls really well. And it's really satisfying to nail with high speeds. This is decent progress. Here. I'm impressed. I wish there was a little bit of music or something, but ah oh well, it's good. Number 59, Snowball Fight. We hope you enjoy the game. Oh, fuck me with a broomstick. This is another damn two player only game, and that's a shame because it looks like it'd be hilarious fun. It controls well, the ice physics add to the chaos, there's health bars, it just looks really fun. Shame I'm a Larry Loner, honestly. Number 60, one on one. <laughs> I think I'm just about done here. Number 61, Invaders from Mars. So I can destroy buildings, I can shoot mines, I can fly, but I keep getting hit by something. I assume I'm fighting someone because of the health bar, but they appear to be invisible. Stop shooting me. Help, help, quick, run away. Run, escape from the game. Goodbye, map. We had good times together. I'll always love you forever. <sighs> Only five more to go. Come on, I'm nearly there. Oh, jeez. You know what? I'm at least glad this isn't like Action 52, where back in the day I would have had to have paid $200 up front for one singular cartridge of 52 shitty, awful, horrible games. I mean, at least it's not like that. These came free in demo discs and magazines, so you're paying for that, and then this is just a bonus, but... Oh, I just, I just can't believe... <laughs> Number 62, hover car racing. So I can already pick my own name, pick my own custom color, and play Tetris while waiting for another player? Fucking awesome. And the game is pretty awesome too. It's another Micro Machines deal, but it plays really tightly and is really satisfying to get every corner perfectly drifted. It's a shame I lost, but whatever. It controls really well, it's really fast paced. I had a lot of fun with this one, that I did. Number 63, Sphere. It's a game about a sphere, couldn't you tell? And I don't know what you do here. I found another disco ball in the vast desert, but I couldn't shoot it or touch it. So, ugh, yeah, fuck this. Number 64, Super Ramp Skater Deluxe Turbo Alpha Plus. Sound awesome? This is the game. I can't move. I can't ollie. I can't do anything. It's wank. Number 65, the penultimate game, Inertia. More spheres, more silence, but the, the ball doesn't actually roll properly. How curious. Um, how do I get up here? Why can't I move? Oh, oh, I fell. Come on, get up. Oh, oh I fell. Oh, maybe I just need a run up. Oh, oh. I fell. Let's try again. Oh, fuck off! Yes, yes, I'm gonna do it. Yay! Next level! It's the same thing! <laughs> and for the final game, number 66, we have... Jagged. It's Tetris with less control over where your pieces go. Shit! Okay, I'm done. I'm fucking exhausted. My brain is hurting. 66 games. Some good. Mostly terrible. I know only hate. Hate? Hate, 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 one that I have neglected to talk about just for the right occasion, and 1 million subscribers is the one it's going to be on. And what is it exactly? So I'll leave you with that, and if it's your birthday they're watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful.
Man. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching this video, and thanks so much for 500,000 subscribers. I can't believe it, I really can't. But before the outtakes come on today, I'd like to thank the sponsors for today's episode of Catacris Today, thepixelempire.com, where if you go in the description, everything you see on the screen here, all these original TV, movie, and game wall print designs, high glossy quality posters, and everything like that. If you go to thepixelempire.com and use the coupon code CADDY on checkout, you get 15% off of any order and help support this channel directly. There's so much awesome stuff, my house is covered in it. So yeah, please go and have a look. Thanks for listening everyone, and here are some outtakes for you. Subscribe. Half. Oh wait, is the, is the mic on? Yeah. <laughs> so hey, this is already pretty flattering, so how about... Flattering? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> what are you on about? We're on 33 games and we're only halfway there! Oh. Oh! I don't remember the line. <coughs> Ready! And the great thing about. And the great thing about. And the great thing about Netcha Rose, which. And the great thing about Netcha Rose in. And the. <laughs>